Let's get all sorted. I'm James. And I'm Jeff. Today we turn the page and look at Lego and print. Join us at our Lego book club. You got a few Lego books. The only thing I have more of than Lego books is Lego itself. Yeah. <laughs> I have quite a few Lego books. There has been a lot of them put out over the years. Uh, yeah, especially recently, there's been a bit of an explosion in Lego. Hey, kids, read books. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Minecraft. Well, I guess, I guess if you're a parent looking for an educational thing, the only thing more educational than Lego would be a book about Lego. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah, and they come in a few different uh, flavors, let's say, genres of Lego books. So you got the, uh, the book that shows you lots of fancy Lego and ideas that you can build. Yes. The do-it-yourselfer, yeah. I'd say I'd call that. Hey, hey here's stuff. Figure yeah. out how to do it. Or, or even better, here's stuff, and we give you picture-by-picture picture instructions. That'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah, those are great books. Gener generally aimed at kids. Right. Not that adults can't enjoy them. No. Right? They can, right? I think we're allowed to. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then they have uh, sort of your Lego art book. Which is, hey, look at these super fancy things that other people with way more talent than you'll ever have have done. Yeah. And then you look at them and you feel sad, but also inspired, but also sad. When you read the description, you go, well, I don't have that many hours in my life. Yes. So. This is exactly what I would love to do had I the time, ambition, and money. And a team. <laughs> and team. <laughs> yeah. And they're gorgeous. Oh, it's amazing. They are. Yeah. And then there's that third kind, which is essentially the Lego storytelling books. Yeah. Where the Lego, it's not, the, the, the book is not about Lego per se. Lego is more the medium in which they are telling the story. Right. Like or a from graphic which. novel or something. Yeah. It's like, it's, like a, it's like a plastic model. So let's go back to those first ones. The Lego, the, the Lego idea books. Well, yeah. The, the very first books uh, that were published by Lego, they published themselves. Uh, they started about 1967. Um, and the very first ones, uh, they call them Lego Ideas, which is a great name because they're like, hey, kids, here's some ideas <laughs> for you to build with our stuff. And that's what they were, mostly just pictures of, of you know, alternate builds and, and uh, different models kids could do. Um, at some point, they started putting in the actual step-by-step -step instructions, which made kids' lives easier hmm. and give them, you know, it's, it's not, it gives them the foundation for how to, to play with the blocks in different ways and make different things. Yeah. So they were... They were fun. Extends a lifespan. Um, yeah, and it was. Uh, I, they didn't come out every year. It was a little outside of what Lego did as a company in those years. But between uh, '67 and 1997, um, they released 25 of these Lego ideas or Lego idea type books. Some of them focused on uh, just trains, or they would focus on uh, a certain theme, like the pirate theme or the castle theme. Um, and some were just general. Hey, here's a bunch of stuff. That's a pretty good run, though. Yeah, that's not bad, you know, for something to support the toy. Yeah. Uh, and it worked. And, and some of them are collector's items and some of them are not. <laughs> so uh, if you look through your old Lego books and see if you have any of the really cool old Lego ideas books and see how far Lego has come. Yeah. Uh, just in terms of what you can build with them. Exactly. Yeah. So that was fun. Um, but after that, I think Lego decided, hey... We're not a book publisher. Maybe we should get in contact with book publishers and have them publish books and we'll keep making toys. And I think that's worked out well. Yeah. As a, uh, yeah. Um, the first, as far as I can find, the very first licensed book came out from Klutz Press. You, if, if you're a child of the 80s, you should know Klutz. They did the, uh, like, learn how to juggle, and we give you the two, the three juggling balls in the bag with the book that you can learn to juggle with. Right, yeah. Uh, and uh, my uh, brother had one with Hacky Sack. <laughs> learn to Hacky Sack. Excellent. Yeah, and uh, so in 1998, they put out the crazy action contraptions, and uh, it was nice. It came with all the Lego you needed to build five cool contraptions that did things. I think mm. one was a candy machine which is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, and then it also had instructions for five more if you have Lego at home. And let's face it, if you're getting this book, you probably have Lego at home. Yeah. Um, so that worked well. Uh, and they still release, Klutz Books is still doing set set books. I guess that's what we'll call them. Sure. Set books as they have sets and pieces. Um, and uh, the most recent just came out this year called Chain Reactions. Design and build amazing moving machines. So they saw some. I wonder how that worked if Lego 
was looking for people to offload the license to, or if somebody, if they came to Lego and said, Hey, we want to get in on this. That is a good question. I wonder. Yeah. I, it, to me, because they haven't put a ton of books out, it's, it feels like plots went to them Yeah. Um, with this idea. Cause they're like, Hey, we, we publish books that include physical items and you have a cool physical item. Lego was like, oh, let's do it. That's, yes. Yeah. Uh, in, in terms of big agreements, in 1999, uh, Lego signed a deal with uh, Dorling Kindersley, or DK as they're commonly right. known. As you see with all those pseudo, not pseudo, quasi-educational books in the kids' book section. Yeah. That's they, what I always think of them as. They're, I, I guess they, they came to fame with their... like. They had, there's a DK style, yeah, right, which is that lots of pictures, exactly, uh, with not too many words on glossy white paper, yep. and that's sort of their <laughs> signature style. But to be fair, it really works with Lego. Oh, exactly. Yeah, because it's yeah. a it's a visual toy, which is why we record a podcast about it. <laughs> <laughs> a wise decision on our part, of course. Uh, but uh, no, that's a good partner for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, they're owned by Penguin Books, so yeah. But then again. Who isn't, I guess? Yeah, uh, yeah they've... Uh, I think you can say they're doing very well. So how many books do they have they put out? Um, well, it's hard to get an a, a, a true account. Uh, <laughs> but I did I did go to their website. That many. And I literally counted every individual book they have for sale right now. So these are books in print that they could ship you. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, what do you think the number was? If you had to guess, ballpark. A uh, couple dozen. Uh, that would be a reasonable amount. No, no, eighty-seven different titles. <laughs> that's that's a lot. That's eighty-seven in their current lineup in two thousand fifteen. Why? Uh, well, like so? What? Yeah. How? Well, they have a lot of different lines. Okay. Right. Uh, they have early readers, and early readers make up a ton oh, of it because right. you're going to have the like level zero ones which have mostly pictures the and little a few story words book exactly type ones, right uh, and they're like 10 pages Forgot each about right this. and all the, the oh, yeah. they do the superhero they license. do the su yeah. they, all the licensed ones superhero right. and the star wars and yeah they're they're oh you know what? it is probably over 87 then now that uh, I think I forgot all about those yeah yeah it's a lot yeah <laughs> it's a lot no 87 I did the count that's crazy uh it was it was a fun time spending counting those are they're cool books. I, I they're they're generally and and uh, you know again I'm not their target audience. No. They're generally terribly written. Yeah, I didn't but, want to say that, but yes. But my uh, my five year old loves them. Okay. And we have to read them many 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 times, and he's learning to read on them, and well, he's very excited. Hey, for words. And that's the key when you're teaching yeah. someone to read is find something they like. Exactly. Um. So. The pictures are great. Yeah. They're very well put together. The narrative is sometimes a little disjointed, I find, in those things. Yeah. It, but uh, the, especially when they're trying to do a, a, a franchise or license. Yeah, exactly. It's like, what is the story? Well, especially if you think about it, you've got the Lego license, and then you also have, say, DC yeah. or the Star Wars. It gets convoluted. So, yeah, there's probably more lawyers involved in writing the book than actual <laughs> writers. <laughs> so, writer is a pseudonym for a collective of lawyers. Yeah. Uh, so those are fun. Uh, and then they do the sticker books, which I think they just make for Scholastic to take money out of parents on right. the Scholastic forms. Those because are educational? In no way, oh, shape, or form wait, are they educational. Not, yes. Uh, but they come with hundreds of stickers, dozens of which your kid will use. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, but they're awesome. I mean, I'm not going to lie. No. <laughs> they're well produced with great stickers. Uh, and then the Brickmaster books, which I thought was a great idea. Um, so what they've done there is they take a terribly written book. And again... Uh, if you write one of these books for a living, um, you know, my heart goes out to you. It's got to be hard. Oh, yeah. It's like, okay, you've got to write a story well, that involves small models that we can include the parts of and then put the instructions to build those models into the narrative. Yeah, so it's not shoehorned at all. Here's your uh, writing list. Here's yeah. the words you need to include, and here's the list of things. And you've got to, I mean, they're trying to get the vocab down to a certain level and yeah. too much to include. But they're, they're I mean, hard. they're fun books and that the kids read the story and they build the stuff and they can build other yeah. stuff out of the same bricks. And then, and it gets them a couple mini figures and some bricks. That's not, it's not a bad thing. No. Anything that gets kids reading. Yeah. Um, but to, to me, the, the highlights of what they publish, they do the, the Lego playbooks, which are, I guess, sort of grown up versions of the Lego ideas. Well, I don't want to say grown ups because kids <laughs> can obviously read these ones too, but they're, they're bigger, more colorful with way more ideas packed into them. And it's got some how-to and some, hey, take a look at this for inspiration. Um, and they're just really well put together books. So I highly recommend the Lego playbooks. But the, the visual encyclopedias are what they do best. 
and that's uh that's what got me back into lego hmm. was the 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 dc universe i think that's what they call the dc universe visual encyclopedia hmm. which I don't know if my wife got it for my kids or if I got it for my kids or if I got it for me secretly, but said it was for the kids, <laughs> but just going through the pages and my kids, they wanted to know all the details about all the sets they'd released and what minifigures were in it. And we're reading it and I'm going, Oh, these are such cool sets. And then I had to buy some. <laughs> so that's uh they're great. Um, and they're uh, the minifigure, the Lego minifigure year by year, yeah, which has all the history of the minifigure and uh, shows, all the key minifigures as they went through the years. And it's, it's a great book, a really fun read with lots of pictures. Um, can't complain. Can't no. complain about those. So kudos to DK for at least producing some quality. Exactly. Yeah. yeah if you're going to be putting out 87 books, yeah. <laughs> something better be good. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's the, that's that they're the only books you'll see that have the Lego logo on them. Right. Cause okay. they're the, the officially licensed uh. ones. Um, but Lucky for us, there's lots of unofficial Lego books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, we've said before, we've said it many times, uh, Lego is a toy company that makes toys for children, which is why most of the DK books are aimed towards kids. All the officially licensed stuff is going to have kids first is sort of the attitude. Right. Um, on the unlicensed stuff, uh, our No Starch Press, um, it puts out a ton of great books aimed more towards the adult. They're, they are a friend of the adult friends of Lego. Uh, and they do a, a great job putting out books for the bigger kids that play. Um, some of my favorite, they do uh, the really, really beautiful um, art books. There's Art of the Brick, and then there's now a second beautiful Lego book. Uh, and they're just full of pictures of things that, that, if anyone says, oh, you play with Lego, oh, you're playing with toys, you can show them these and go like, it's not so much a toy. Yeah. If you can produce these beautiful works of art with them. So what would be some of the kind of sets that they focus on? They don't focus on any sets. Or, um, or not sets, sorry, some of the builds. Is there any kind of well-known builds that they that stick out from what they focus on? Or like they focus on all the big ones? Or what yeah, do they do? They, they, it's, um, they take all the big ones. Okay. All, the, all the big players, all the, all the people who, who have uh, made their living making Lego art gotcha. are featured in the different books. So it's, it's quite a cross-section. Right. Um, and it's... it's uh, it, I mean, it's a book's worth of material for yeah. sure, or three books worth of material for sure, and they're they're definitely worth checking out. So, yeah. um, so I it suggest kind of focuses on the master level builders. Yeah, and the people that aren't looking at it as um, necessarily. Uh, I mean, some of them are representations of things in real life or scale buildings or right. things like that, um, but a lot of it is just just pure art. Gotcha. You know, things that uh, that look good using color and shape, yeah. but not necessarily. Um, uh, uh, physical renderings of stuff. Does that make sense? That a makes sentence? sense. Sure. Yeah, I think so. I mean, they are physical renderings because they're made of Lego, but that's, <laughs> wow. I've gone down a wormhole of language. I should probably dig myself out. Um, the other, uh, the other series that is fantastic by them is the Lego adventure book. And they're, they're on a third volume of that. And it's a kind of a cool concept. Uh, what they did is they have a little minifigure who goes and visits, uh, the these master builders, these people online that that are adult friends of Lego that have a very certain style of building, uh, and sort of interviews them through play with the minifigures. So it's the avatar of the offer talking to the avatar of the creators, and uh, maybe there's a challenge. I know in one of the books there was a, a villain that was wrecking things, and then the character had to go and help rebuild it. And it's sort of it's sort of weird because it's it's geared towards adults in that some of the builds are quite complicated hmm. um but it's geared towards kids and that it's very bright and colorful and fun so it's yeah. a it's a good book that you can read with your kids that sounds like a good format um yeah it's really a, it's and a nice great kind of pictures to yeah tell the story and then it has some step-by-step -step models for building some things and it has hmm. some hey look at these uh and it's it's just really well done overall so hmm. um, i know I had the first two and i've got the third one coming to me so uh that's exciting uh, and then uh, Lego Neighborhood, which is actually the most recent book I've bought, hmm. um, which is uh, it's a it's about modular building. Which I'm I anyone who's ever bought one modular building gets <laughs> into the modular building because there's such good builds, uh, and you want to build more. And this book lays the groundwork for um, everything from from very beginner stuff like what is the layout you need to use for modular building, so it will connect with the other modular buildings. Right and tips and techniques. And it offers um, a couple builds in it, step-by-step uh, -step builds. Hmm. One for a 
built standalone building, and then another for a really cool concept of uh, basically a, a, a building you can build that has a facade that you can change. Nice. And then it offers three different versions of the facade. So you can build three buildings out of the one build hmm. or even just change it up on your own. And it's a, a really good build. Um, one of the weird things about this book, though, is when I bought it, I went to, uh, you know, the big chain store that is available to everyone in the world. Right. And uh, when I got to the counter, the, the lady at the counter, who was already about half my age, she's like, oh, that's like a cool book. Can I see it? I'm like, yeah, no problem. And she's flipping through the pages. And then she goes, oh my little brother would love this. And I was like, come on, this is a grown up book book for a grown up person. And I'm a grown up. And then I cried and I left the store. I too am buying it for children. Yes. <laughs> Me. Uh, but uh, great book, great pictures again. Um, and that brings us to sort of our, uh, the, the other style These of book. The wild card Lego books that are, <laughs> when you brought... Yeah, I, I was like, you, you thumped that down on the table, and I was like, what is that? Yeah, and the book that made us think that is, it's called Assassination, the Brick Chronicle of Attempts on the Lives of Twelve Presidents. Because I, I think when I need to tell the story of, you know, all the presidents being uh, iced, obviously yeah. I'm going to tell that story through Lego. Yeah. That makes sense, I think. Well, let's, let's start at the beginning with this mm. book. And, uh, and this book, it does start at the beginning because, uh, really, it's from a gentleman named Brendan Powell Smith. Uh, and uh, he spent a decade creating nearly 5,000 Lego scenes from the Bible on the BrickTestament.com. That makes sense. Which is, uh, uh, like, you can, you can lose days on that website because he, he did a good job. And there was, uh, so because he did that, it led to them collecting his, his little vignettes into a book called The Brick Bible in 2011, and that sold extremely well. Uh, created a little bit of controversy, as some people didn't like God being a little plastic man. <laughs> um, and uh, that being said, I mean, the text is from the Bible, and if it's in the Bible, there's a little Lego scene of it, which yeah, is... There's some weird stuff in there, so I imagine there must be some... Just this morning, I was looking at, uh, at Lego scenes of circumcision. <laughs> That's not what you expect. That, it's, it's really, not. it's really not. So you're saying this isn't a, a licensed product. This is strangely <laughs> enough, not a licensed product. Um, oh. Again, like all the pictures are, are tasteful. I guess as tasteful as it can tasteful. be for these things. <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah. And man. so uh, not only, not only did they, did that lead to a sequel? The, he had to do the new Testament. You well, can't of course. just, yeah, no. exactly. And then they collected it into, uh, into a collected edition, um, which it's fantastic. Uh, then he's also put out uh, Bible books for kids, brick Bibles for kids, which tell one little story in a very uh, in a very kid friendly format, um, and that's fun. That that's fun. So I imagine hilarious. there's no Lego circumcision in the kid no. versions. No, it's more Jonah and the whale and and uh, those sort of stories. Yeah, I wonder if this kind of spawned out of that whole uh, early internet, you know, thing of taking stuff and doing it with Lego. Like Lego became a very good early animation mm -hmm. thing. I wonder if it, this is kind of uh, taking that concept of, hey, this is hilarious and weird, and look, it's Lego, and applying it to book form. Like, before that, before the internet, did you ever see things like this? I don't know. There's a good, if you go to um, his website, if you go to, uh, uh, well, it's actually a different one, thebrickbible.com, uh, it'll show him working on his new book, which we'll talk about in a sec. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but in the interview, he basically says, um, you know, I was a kid, I played with Lego, and then around 13, like most people, I went into my dark ages. Hmm. And then when I graduated from school and moved to the West Coast, I realized I could get the Lego I never had as a kid, and the options opened up for me, and I was looking for something to do with it, and I thought, hey, the Bible. That's And there you go. Okay. And I got to say, his photography skills are are excellent. He knows mm. how to frame a shot yeah. uh, very well of some weird, weird stuff. There's there's some laugh out loud moments in the assassination well, book. Well, what's crazy is it is a violent, violent book. As you would imagine, oh, yeah. it's a book about assassinations yeah. and a, a good number of these assassinations are very successful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all done through brick effects. It's quite remarkable some of the things he pulled. You're like, I, I would not have thought of using that part for that purpose. Yes. There's a lot of that where I, well, that was an innovative. Huh, you're right. If you take the Lego flame brick and turn it sideways, <laughs> it does look like an exit wound. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it's, it's terrible. But it's weird because um, it's, 
it's a little easier to look at in that it's done in Lego. And so yeah. for a lot of the violent things, I'm looking at it not thinking, oh, how horrific. I'm th I really am thinking, huh, what an innovative use of that piece. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go. I will give him some credit on that. That There's more, yeah, there's weird, weird stuff. Yeah. Right and it's it's a page turner. It's a hard one to put down. Now, I'm not going to lie. I would not have bought this book if it was not in the bargain bin at $10. Right. That being said, now that I have it, I'm going to get the rest of his books. Yeah. Because they're just phenomenal. I don't, he, I wouldn't call him a historian. No. I feel like his, his, his research level is that of Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> Look it up. Okay. I mean, it, they're funny. Like some yes. of the stuff is, I didn't read all of it, but it no. was, you, you dip in here and there and it's, it's interesting. Yes. <laughs> and you have to admire this, the level of oh, yeah. work Absolutely. involved in doing it. Those, yeah, I mean, how? Yeah, so many little, little tableau, of just these beautiful scenes that like, I I just can't fathom thinking out the narrative of mm -hmm. something like that and then building all of those scenes. Yeah, that is. And then uh, the other nice thing is he does take like iconic photographs, you know, like JFK in the limo, yeah. and recreate them very nicely in in brick. <laughs> oh. But it's still a weird book. Um, I, it was a curious choice. I don't I, think you'd let your kids read it. I've let my yeah, kids read it. I don't know. It's yeah. It's not aimed at kids. No, it's it's a it's a grown up book. Yeah, for sure. And it's a dark. I mean, it's dark. It's yeah, a, it's a really dark talk. Like just having there are things that happen in that book. <laughs> yeah. Oh right. Yeah. <laughs> there there is some weird stuff in that. Some self mutilation. Self mutilation. I think that's the that's most the, PC term that we yeah. can use for that. Um, but then the guy later went on to have a, a go to a prayer meeting and have a breakfast. So that's yeah. and all of it's depicted. So that's fantastic. <laughs> but it's a it's just it's a compelling it book. Is. I would not read a book on the subject. You know, as a Canadian, uh, like assassinations on presidents are sort of a they're a very foreign thing to us. They are. Yeah. Like the closest we've come is uh, a pie a, throw. A pie throw. <laughs> <laughs> Some glitter. Yeah. And there was a burglar in in oh, our right. our version of the White House, but yeah. the uh, our version of the First Lady hit the intruder with a wooden duck and he left. Yeah. That's, that's Canadian level and, violence. And he only right? had a knife. Yeah. <laughs> and he left. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. So, yeah. I'm like, Oh, sorry. Wrong house. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, so it's very foreign to me. I don't know if I'd buy a book on this subject if it were not rendered in Lego, uh, but it is, and it's glorious and it's strange. Um, yeah. So what's his next book? Then? Well, if you're going to follow up the, the death, of American presidents, you right. got to go back to the beginning and do a book on the American Revolution, don't you? The the birth of the country. The, yeah, exactly. Ah, that'll be that will be entertaining. Yeah, Lego Washington crossing so, the Lego Potomac on a is that Lego is that right? another ten years he needs? I no, I think he's I think his process has gotten quite fast, huh. and we should see that book soon because he's already talking about his next project. Wow, um, which I. I, I don't know if it's tough because if you look at his website, it's hard to know what's real and what's art right, yeah, and yeah. what's performance. Yeah. As he's, you know, anyone that would take these endeavors on, he's an interesting man. He's eccentric. Yeah. And so there is talk of there being a, uh, a, um, a brick book of Mormon and okay. we'll see. Huh. We'll see. Well, he's found, he knows what's, I guess, making money for him. Yeah. And you know he's he's making a living. Yeah, kudos to him. Must be and enjoying I, it. I don't think he's hurting anyone. If you don't like it, don't look at it. No, but that one of the more well, he's hurting a lot of Lego minifigures. He's yes, hurting a lot. There's, there's a, a lot, lot of, of carnage of Lego minifigures. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what Lego feels about it. I imagine there's designers who look at it and go, "This is phenomenal," yeah. and there are designers that look at it and go, "This is terrible." This is an abomination. Yeah, of... and that's I think that's fine. Yeah. Well, you know? it, I think he, it it's definitely pushes the edge a little bit and says, well, okay, you've built this, this child's toy. And yeah. There's a lot of things that can be done with it. Here's one possibility. Yeah. I don't see uh, a similar book being done with Tinker Toys or Slinkies. No. <laughs> so. That's true. But that's, I guess that's the nice it thing. It shows that, how powerful Lego is. That exactly. It, that it can be taken that far. Yeah. Lego is not really a toy. It's just, it's, it's an outlet for imagination. It's a medium. Yeah. And, uh, and it's better than a box of paints because I think you need less talent <laughs> to be able to make it do things. Yeah. That's not to say with amazing talent, you can't no, do amazing things, but, but uh, the barrier to entry is, is much nicer. You've got some vision. Yeah. So that's, that's the current state of Lego books. Hmm. And there are, 
and they won't be slowing so, down. I'm no, sure. it's Not anytime it's soon. been exploding, and yeah. I haven't I haven't come across a bad one yet. Every every Lego book has either taught me something or shown me something I didn't know existed before. Right. So, uh, yeah, if you're looking to do some reading over the summer, get a Lego there book. You go. Pop on down to the library. Yeah. Go to the store. Yeah. Get the kids reading. They're there. Exactly. Excellent. So, hopefully less bloodshed and yeah. more uh, building. Yeah. But hey, it's all building in the end. <laughs> All right. Is that a wrap up on this? I think I think we can close the book on this uh, one. We're done this chapter of our put podcast. Let's in it for until next week then. Oh, Jeez. <laughs> we can drag those out all day. Uh, but we should probably quit while we're ahead. Well, you're Jeff. And you were James. And we are all sorted. <laughs>